So Tailwind CSS is the most popular CSS framework going on right now. In a lot of my projects, as you have probably witnessed, I'm using a lot of Tailwind CSS. And that it is for the reason that I've just stated that it is one, in fact, I would venture to even say the most popular CSS framework going on right now. In all of my projects, or in most of my projects, I do use Tailwind CSS. There's some instances whereby I use inline React. Of course, that's not going to go inline React styles. That's not going to go away. And sometimes I use um, styled components. But Tailwind CSS is really the dominant framework that is going on right now. And many people are finding Tailwind CSS to be a lot more useful than regular CSS. And that is for a select few reasons. There's a reason why many professional developers are going out to Tailwind CSS and ditching the regular CSS file. And I'm going to tell you the reason why many people are switching to Tailwind CSS. And by the end of this tutorial, we're going to do some creative things with Tailwind CSS and apply Tailwind CSS into uh, a select few examples so that you can really Really see how Tailwind CSS works on a regular HTML or an irregular React file. It's all the same, but after this tutorial, you are going to learn how to build your own stuff, or you're going to learn how to build your own components. You're going to learn how to build your own user interface with Tailwind CSS. And I promise you that it's going to be a lot, much more easier than having a separate external CSS file. Actually, that's the one, that's the first benefit of using Tailwind CSS is that I don't have a separate CSS file that I have to link with my uh, existing or main or predominant project. I don't have to go to my CSS file and then after that navigate between my CSS file and my um, HTML file or my uh, JSX file. I don't have to do that because Tailwind CSS mixes up well together with uh, React, JavaScript, HTML and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to have a separate file. The benefit, the other benefit of using Tailwind CSS is that you get to write less custom CSS. With Tailwind, you style elements by applying pre-existing uh, classes directly into your HTML. So by using utility classes in this manner, you can build your own custom designs without having to write explicit CSS. So that is one benefit of using uh, Tailwind CSS. And the other thing is that you keep your CSS files small. So without a framework like Tailwind, you, you would have to keep writing CSS as you add new features and components. And as the features and the components increase, that means more CSS files are going to be there. You're going to be creating lots and lots of CSS files. And that's really hard to keep track of. As a developer, you really want to have a small set of files that you can keep track of and make sure that they do not conflict one another. And the thing that I don't like about uh, CSS files in React is that most of the time, if you're not careful, you will notice that your CSS file is going to uh, cover most of your component files. So let's Let's say, for example, if I'm styling a div component, if I import those styles into my parent component, those styles are going to be applied to all the children or ch grandchildren of that same component, of that parent component. So the styles are going to be carried through all the component tree. And sometimes you don't want that. You don't want the, such type of conflict in your project. Uh, the other thing about uh, Tailwind CSS is that you don't have time to, inv to invent silly class names. So when Tailwind, uh, with Tailwind, you're choosing classes from an already existing uh, design system, from an already existing collection of classes. So that means you don't need to agonize over picking the correct class name uh, for certain styles and components. You can just use existing predefined classes. The other thing about Tailwind CSS is that you can make uh, safer changes. With the traditional approach, if you make changes to your CSS file, you may break something across your site. So like I said previously, is that if you change your CSS file, then it's going to affect all of your components in the component tree in the context of React. If you make a, C if you make a change in a CSS file, that change is going to affect all of the components inside of that CSS tree. So that is very dangerous. So unlike CSS, utility classes in your HTML or in your React are very local. So that means you can change them and only change them without worrying about breaking something in another component or in another file. So CSS is very important and I'm not saying that it's much more important than regular CSS because regular CSS will always be, it's like the parent CSS, so you can't really get rid of it. But for now, these are just some of the reasons why Tailwind CSS is much more important than regular CSS. So before we dive into actually creating some stuff with Tailwind CSS, I do want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Please make sure that you subscribe Make sure that if you are not getting something or something is a bit amiss or you're confusing because I'm always learning as well. So you can leave a comment in the comment section and also remember to like this video. Like, subscribe and comment. And that is all I'm going to need from you. And now we're going to go into our CSS, Tailwind CSS. The first thing that we're going to need to do, of course, is to configure our Tailwind CSS environment. 
So in order to configure Tailwind CSS in your project, now, um, I don't know what type of project you might have or you might be using right now, but what you can do if you um, are using a project that we're not going to be doing um, here today, because I'm going to be much more uh, focused in configuring Tailwind CSS for React. But you can just go to the tailwindcss.com website. I will leave the link uh, below. If you're too lazy to type tailwindcss.com, I will leave a link in the description box. Of course, I'd do anything for you. Uh, so you can just go to the Tailwind CSS um, uh, website and just click on Get Started. Or you can just like search it up on Google. And there are many different ways of installing Tailwind CSS and many different projects. So like I said, in our project today, we are much more focused in installing or configuring Tailwind CSS in our React project. So that's what we'll be concerning ourselves with today. So of course, the first thing that we would need to do is to create a React project. And we've already done that, so that is good. And then after that, we're going to go to the next step, which is to install Tailwind CSS and install some of the CSS plugins, post CSS, and auto prefixer. So we just come over here, of course, just copy this. After we're done installing all those uh, three packages, we come over here to initialize our Tailwind CSS. And of course, that's going to create a couple of files. First, it's going to create this file over here, tailwind.config.js. And it's also going to create this one, postcss.config.js. We're much more concerned on this one over here, tailwind.config. This is, uh, we're going to use this file to configure our Tailwind CSS to practically just tell um, uh, JavaScript or the compiler how our Tailwind CSS is going to work. So I'm going to go into that file in a minute. Let's just uh, initialize our NP, I mean, our Tailwind CSS. I'm going to pause the video once again. And right after doing that, uh, we're just going to go to our tailwind.config uh, CSS. So there are a couple of settings here. So these settings relate to our tailwind and just like just simply tells um, uh, the compiler or whatever how our tailwind CSS is going to work. We're much more concerned with the setting over here, the content setting. So what the content setting essentially does, it just tells um, the tailwind compiler what files to look for, where to scan our tailwind CSS. Because this is what happens, right? So um, our Tailwind uh, compiler is going to go through a couple of files and it's going to scan for those collective classes, those predefined classes that we just talked about. So it's going to go through certain files that we are going to specify. It's going to go through all those certain files and it's going to look for those specific classes. And once it's, uh, it scans and it sees those specific classes, it knows when to render those exact styles. So over here on content, we are simply telling the Tailwind compiler which files to actually look at, which files to actually scan. So we want our compiler to scan every single file that is in the CRC folder or the SRC folder, sorry. So and then we're going to specify it over here in content. And this is how we're going to specify it. And this is actually available in our the Tailwind CSS website. You can see over here, it's telling uh, the Tailwind compiler to essentially just look at every single file that is inside of the CRC folder. And it goes even beyond that. It tells uh, the compiler to look at every JS file, every JSX file, every TS file, and every TSX files. So what we need right now is we only need JS files because that's what we're, we're concerning ourselves with. But for the moment, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to take it to our config and I'm going to paste it inside. I'm going to get rid of all these other extensions because we're only going to be using JS files in our project. And that will be done. And then the last thing that we're going to do is that we're going to go, we're going to add some Tailwind directives uh, to the index.css file. So we're going to come over here. And these are the Tailwind directives. And we're just going to come to our index.css files and get rid of everything in here. And then we're going to add those um, Tailwind directives inside of that. And after doing that, we're finally done. We can just simply start our project and of course, just come over here and say npm start. And after we start our uh, folder or our file, of course, here is our React project. Now that is running. Now we're going to head straight into Tailwind. We're going to go to app.js, just like that. And we no longer need CSS, as you can see. So you can see how messy really CSS is uh, compared to Tailwind. I mean, you probably see it in a minute. Well, at least I prefer Tailwind than using CSS, all those CSS, cluttered CSS files. So I'm going to get rid of this terminal over here. And I'm going to get rid of everything in here, including the CSS logo. The first thing that we're going to start with is that we're just going to create a simple paragraph. And we're just going to center it in the middle, as easy as that. All right. So we're just going to create a simple P tag. And we're going to put in our lorep, lorem ipsum paragraph over there. If we go to our, would you look at that? Our paragraph is in the middle, but I want to give it a certain width. I don't want it to be too long. I just want it to be like a very small width. Now this is, this will be your first CSS class that you're going to learn about, which is width. 
So in CSS, there, like I said, there are already some predefined CSS classes. So in order to represent a width, I guess I'm struggling because I want to show you the classes first. I just want to show you all the classes in Tailwind CSS. You can visit the Tailwind CSS file. All right, so if you go over to the Tailwind CSS website, and if you uh, come over here, you click the hamburger menu, uh, you can see that there are many different, if you go down a little bit, you will notice there are many uh, different aspects of Tailwind CSS. Um, there's the Flexbox, the Flexbox classes. So actually, because right now I'm do, doing a lot of Flexbox, you can see, let me show you how Flexbox works actually. So you can see that this is how to represent Flexbox uh, this property, the CSS property, when dealing with Tailwind CSS. Let's go to the common ones. I'll go down a bit. So you can see over here, this is how you would represent flex direction in, uh, in Tailwind CSS and regular CSS. So this is how you would write flex direction row in regular CSS, and this is how you would write it in Tailwind CSS. It's much more shorter and it's much more concise. This is how you would write a column direction in the regular CSS, and this is how you would write it in Tailwind CSS. So you can see that Tailwind makes things uh, much more shorter and much more easier to use, and this is how you use it. So you can see, if we look at this, this is actually uh, telling us display flex. So this is how you would say display flex in, in Tailwind CSS as opposed to uh, regular CSS. And over here, you're declaring that all those items are in a row-like uh, uh, direction. And you can see this is how you would say row reverse in uh, Tailwind CSS. So let's check out uh, some other things as well. So this website is definitely the golden, uh, the golden, I don't know, rail or something. Um, so yeah, a couple of things in here as well. You have flex wrap as well. This is how you would say it in regular CSS, and this is how you would say it in uh, any other type of CSS. So we're just gonna—I think we're just gonna do that paragraph. So once again, uh, we're gonna use Tailwind CSS, and in order to write. Oh, one more thing. I'm forgetting the other thing is that in Tailwind CSS, there's actually an extension uh, called Tailwind uh, CSS. So it really helps you to just know. Uh, it really helps you to just like uh, be able to be sort of like it enhances your Tailwind uh, CSS experience. Um, it gives you that intelligence so that you don't have to cram everything in your brain. All you just need to know is a couple of things and you are able to get that intelligence to just tell you what is actually happening. So it's called Tailwind CSS Intelligence. It provides intelligence for Tailwind CSS. So it's a very common package as you can see on million uh, people who've installed this package. So now let's go back to our files. Uh, we're going to start with our paragraph once again. I'm going to give it a width. So this is how you would represent width in Tailwind CSS. And if you say uh, MD, you're simply saying that that width is medium. And normally, if you were to hover over here, the IntelliSense would actually uh, decode that Tailwind CSS class, what it essentially means. So most of the time, it doesn't work properly. So what I do is just I uninstall it and just try to install it again, and then just hope that this time around it's going to work. We're going to go back to our files once again. And if we were to write W, MD. All right, so the IntelliSense is acting up. It has a tendency of doing that. So just continue. We're just going to continue. So this is like WMD. It's just to tell us that the width is medium. So I managed to pause my video and actually make uh, the Tailwind extension work. Just had to install it and uninstall it and install it again. So once again, come over here, W, and say maybe 20, but let's say 80 this time around. And let's see if it'll work. And if we go to our folder, let's refresh this so that it yeah, calls. And so you can see that our paragraph it has a certain width to it. So now we're going to go to our tutorial. Uh, let me close this again. Or maybe just minimize it. Let me close this again. And so I'm going to give it a little bit of a center. And in order to center it, I'm going to just say margin auto. So before we, we continue with that, you can see now that if I hover over here, it is practically uh, uh, decoding to you what this uh, class, this utility class essentially means. It means that you are giving out a width of about 320 pixels or 20 ramps. So that's the cool thing about that extension. So now we want to center that thing. And in order to center it, I'm going to say margin. And in order to represent margin in Tailwind CSS, you just say M. And so I'm going to just say M auto. And if we go back to our project, you will notice that it's now at the very center of our screen. Cool. So now, we're going to try and use uh, maybe Flexbox in order to center this paragraph at the exact center. I'm going to just show you how to use Flexbox with Tailwind CSS. Once again, to uh, so right now, let's get rid of this auto. 
and we're gonna come over here to our div and we're gonna just say class name and in order to declare the items as flex box you just simply write flex and in order to justify everything to the center I'm gonna just say justify dash center and then I'm gonna say align oh no sorry it's actually items center and then you'll notice that if we save this we expect everything to be at the exact center all right cool so we've centered our paragraph appropriately using Tailwind CSS. So we're going to end our tutorial over here with our Tailwind CSS. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and that you have liked the video. And feel free to comment if you want. Other than that, I will see you next time on Coding 101.